Every month, we lay a tribute at the feet of the gods of Netflix and pray they bestow something tasty upon us. Perhaps the next season of Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. Maybe some new undiscovered anime, or even just to stop flaunting the fucking Step Up films. But instead, we were delivered a divine dick in the derriere in the form of dear white people. So let's have a little look at the trailer, shall we? Dear white people. Hello! Here's a list of acceptable Halloween costumes. Oh good, a list. And are we still on the fucking Halloween costume thing? Fuck! Pirate, slutty nurse, any of our first 43 presidents. <laughs> you can fuck off, mate! Do you know how many people will be dressing as Trump this year? Fuck me, buy shares in Donald Trump masks now, guys. I'm telling you, it is a solid investment. Top of the list of unacceptable costumes. Well, these two guys seem to be dressed as Seth MacFarlane and John Cena. Me. Oh shit. There go my plans of dressing up as a right miserable bitch. Wow. White screen. Racist. So this is a new series based on the film of the same name, which I've already seen because I swear I've watched about 60% of everything available on Netflix. And the film calls itself a satire despite being entered in the drama category at the Sundance Film Festival. So now we already know the whole thing is based on lies. And the series looks like a carbon fucking copy of the film. I don't know if they're doing what they did with the Dust Till Dawn series, like basically make the film but in episodes, and then carry on after the film would end until they really don't know what the fuck they're doing anymore. Or like they did with the video game version of The Warriors, which led up to and included the events of the film and was a fucking masterpiece. I mean, look at it. This fucking game, man. Best video game of a film ever. So anyway, it's a series based on the 2014 film which is currently available on Netflix. Yes, I've watched it and no, I did not lie. Like it. But that wasn't because of the obvious fair-skinned reasons, it was really because it was a shit fucking film. I mean, no explosions, no titties, there was a bit of ass at one point, but that's it really. I mean, it, it really tried too hard, in my opinion. But anyway, let's get to the racial stuff. The protagonist is Samantha White, who runs a popular radio show called Dear White People on her university's radio station. Because there's no better way to exercise your prowess in media than indulging in a dying fucking format. Her show sounds a lot like most videos from the Huffington Post about intersectionality or some shit, so thankfully we only hear bits of it, probably because the writer realised he had written some right off-key shit shit and had to cut it down. But then some fucker phones in, right, and asks, how would you like it if I started a Dear Black People? To which the protagonist answers, mass media from Fox News to reality TV on VH1 makes it clear what white people think of us. Now I think this speaks volumes, not just about the film itself, but about a lot of the backlash the series is already getting. It's ridiculous to think the likes of Fox News speaks on behalf of anyone, let alone every Caucasian in the world, and yet this character, the main bitch, argues that it is. But then, by the same token, this film doesn't speak on behalf of all black people, and anyone who thinks it does is a fucking dickhead. So I don't get some of the shit it's been getting. Sure, on the surface, its message seems to be all black people under the age of 25 are angry, and all white people are fucking bigots and constantly say bruh. The only character in the film with a bit of substance to them being Everybody Hates Chris, who is struggling with being a homosexual and black. So so, you know, poor everybody hates Chris. But not a lot of people are in the habit of letting on-demand services shape their worldly views. It's fucking Netflix, not Abstergo. And even if someone was deeply affected by it and started fucking up white people in the street as a result, hell, if a fucking Netflix series did that to them, then they were on the fucking edge in the first place. Anyway, the few black characters who don't subscribe to Samantha White's thinking are portrayed as being up their own asses. The few people who find things funny or who generally aren't trying to tear everything fucking down in a Black Lives Matter-esque tantrum. Actually, there is even a scene where the black and Latino students start smashing shit up at a party while someone films. Proper shout out, I think. But throughout all of this, she isn't racist. I mean, I don't mean to ruin the film for you, but it starts out with her radio show and ends with a fucking riot. So you could say she fucking caused it. But she's not racist because she's fucking a white dude, thus hinting at the idea that she can't be because she has a white friend. Sound familiar? 
If I had to sum it up in one sentence, it would be Ivy League student sees problems in everything. I mean, I won't be watching that shit again. I'll be putting it up on the shelf with the other bollocks people love to hate, like Rubber and Troll 2. But I didn't finish watching and found myself with a newly discovered sense of racial sensitivity, and Netflix hasn't been charging me more per month because I'm white, so if that was the film's aim, then it failed, and that will probably be the case with the series too. Now, some people have been showing their indignation by cancelling their Netflix subscription. Oh, fuck that! What am I gonna watch then? The fucking BBC with all that quality content and a licensing fee that's way more than £5 a month? You're having a fucking laugh, mate! Yes, it may seem questionable that Netflix chose to make a series based on a film from the 2014 Sundance Film Festival despite there being many others to choose from, and it didn't even win a fucking award, but the fact is they chose this this one. Why? Because they reckon it will make them some fucking money. And the controversy currently surrounding it has provided some free fucking advertising on their part, so bravo on the marketing. My advice to those who are trying to boycott the company over this series coming out is stop being such a fucking snowflake and grow some thicker skin. Yes, it does seem to peddle the oversensitive look at the shit we have to deal with mantra, but so are the people causing such a fuss over it. As with everything, if you take offence, don't fucking watch it. But that question from 10 minutes into the film still sits in the back of my head. What would happen if someone made a Dear Black People? And the answer is easy. It would kick the fuck off. Black Lives Matter would start smashing up some local business that is in no way related to the show, and I highly doubt Netflix or Amazon would take up the licence. And therein lies the problem. Not with the film or series Dear White People itself, but with the fact that there can never be a Dear Black People. Thanks for watching guys, and remember, you can't write a black character without writing a racist white character too.